have decided to start a new project based around this toolbox. This is, getting something out of the way, the Windsor 8 drawer toolbox from Harbor Freight. It's uh, about $80 with tax, a little bit more. Um, I just picked this up Tuesday, and it's Thursday. So I'll open it up a little bit, so, and I'll move the camera a bit, now that you've seen who it is. And tilt this back so you can see it better. This has got eight felt-lined wooden drawers, two large ones, and then six relatively small ones. And what I'm going to try to do with this chest is build something that I was inspired by a item that's available from uh, Grizzly. They have two versions of it. Uh, it's a, a wooden collet rack, which from Grizzly they claim is oak. At least Windsor Harbor Freight doesn't claim this is oak. But they claim, uh, claim it's oak and it has a set of uh, a smaller set of drawers. It's a somewhat smaller cabinet style thing with a gap at the top and a board across the top that is bored to hold either 5C or R8 collets. And I've been looking for a way to build or materials to build an R8 collet rack, an additional R8 collet rack for out in the shop next to my uh, vertical mill. Uh, and I was inspired by that, the unit that you can find on Grizzly, but I was disappointed in the price. The sale price is quite high to me at this point. So my thought is, I'm going to convert this over into such a thing. I'm going to dismantle the top here, and I'll show you some of that. And... Um, what I'm intending to do, because I'm not so sure, this is about half inch thick material, but I'm not so convinced of its quality and uh, strength. What I'm going to tend to do, intend to do, is I have some a sheet of Baltic birch plywood that I think I've had for more than 20 years. I may have only had it for about 20 years. I want to cut a piece out to match the top here, glue it on, I'll sand this off, glue this piece of Baltic birch on the top, and then I'll drill a series of one inch holes with a Forstner bit that I have through both pieces of wood to make the top a, uh, into a uh, collet rack. And I figure and you'll see some things here as I open this. The depth, both of this tray in the top and this little gap here, it probably is deep enough to uh, accommodate them without the extra thickness of the uh, Baltic birch plywood, but it will definitely be deep enough. Now, what I'm going to do, the plan is, as I go through this, I'll remove this lid, do the work to it. I've got to remove this handle, and once I, uh, but I'll put it back on. I'll leave most of this hardware. Hopefully, I can leave the hardware in place. Maybe not, not the corners, but these latches and all, because with a series of holes up here. Hopefully I won't fill them all quickly, but even if they're normally filled, I pro uh, there probably will be open holes. And it will sit next to the mill. This area will get chips and dirt and stuff and have to be cleared out periodically. So reattaching it to the hinges and all uh, and leaving the lid able to open when needed will be an advantage. And 
what I'm thinking is that these shallow little wood drawers will make this is a, just a packing piece these little wood drawers both the ones that have dividers and the ones that are open will be good for storing um, lots of uh, end mills and things like that even these big wood drawers being shallow can spread end mills and other tools for uh, cutting tools that are used in the uh, uh, machine um, the milling machine throughout these um, drawers this is 20 inches wide uh, a little over 10 inches front to back and about 16 inches high I think is what the specs are you can look on Harbor Freight they have these it's called a Windsor toolbox they list two different catalog numbers for some reason but they seem to be identical well after discovering that there are actually two screws as you can see with these two holes four holes two screws at each end of the handle I finally have the handle removed and I've already lost one of these shields off one end but we'll put it there this is actually kind of a nice handle that may come in handy on something else I build someday except I think I already have another handle like this floating around because for that eventuality that I've never used hmm of all the hardware the most time-consuming part was this were these inner two holes getting the screws out of them uh, it may be that there was put together in two steps or something because um, the holes that I uncovered were smaller than the uh, screw heads and it seems like the interior is some kind of particle board so more I look at this more I'm glad I think that I'm um, going to laminate it. it it's very, very this wood's very very soft I've damaged it here already I don't know if that'll show up on camera um, dented it in several places here and here trying to apply uh, there's other scrapes and scratches already so but we'll get that uh, next step for this is to when hopefully the weather will be warm enough I can take it out and sand down this surface just smooth it out and cut it a little bit just to make sure that the uh, the glue is sticking well to the wood when I get the uh, piece of um, birch ply cut which that's the big step is because I just gave away a little over a year, well not quite a year ago maybe I gave away my bit um, table saw because I hadn't used it in at least 15 or 16 years well here we are uh, I've just glue uh, set up gluing the uh, piece of uh, half inch Baltic birch plywood the top of the uh, toolbox from Har Harbor Freight actually first use of my uh, uh, cylinder square that I bought last summer using it as a weight to help get the glue get everything to set now we'll leave it for a few hours I finished the gluing up you can see how the uh, um, Gorilla Glue came out nicely uh, I don't know if that's nicely or bad but it's the uh, uh, complete I had some interesting things um, I noticed there was a Gorilla Glue spot you'll see it here I thought maybe I'd spilled and then I realized I couldn't have spilled into this part and then what it is is there's a split in this in the original top and it was oozing the foam was oozing through the split which further reinforces my de decision to uh, reinforce the top now I have to trim it back down and that'll be involving setting up my um, router and uh, uh, router table that I well I'm gonna say good afternoon because it's afternoon when I'm filming this this is 
hopefully the culmination of a uh, video that I will have to put together. I haven't been watching all the, or reviewed all the pieces I filmed before this, but uh, filmed, videoed. Um, but this is the, uh, hopefully the final video. Um, it's of a project I've been working on for quite a few weeks uh, altogether. Um, mostly this video has taken so long to produce because I finished the project maybe a while ago, a couple of weeks ago, and finally get around to shooting this final video. And the video is about building this uh, toolbox, call it R8, call it rack. Uh, but what I wanted is a rack for R8 collets. And why? And well, if you I'll step over here so they're clear, I don't know how well you'll see it, but I have one of those spinning racks. It's supposed to be mounted on the mill, but I mounted it on the wall, which for me is probably better with my small mill. This has the uh, collets in it from one eighth to three quarters by sixteenths, the normal set apparently that ever com comes because it fills the rack. Well, I had additional collets, which I have four more collets that I've got in the top here that I need somewhere to store, and I could store them in this rack, but I stored them over here. Now, these four collets are duplicates of four of these collets. Someday I probably will need to get metric. Uh, Collets. Uh, these are all inch collets, inch sizes, fractional inch sizes. Again, there's standard R8 collets. In the back here, these are the uh, set screw type. Uh, I have five of the set screw type uh, uh, end mill holders. <laughs> Unfortunately, because of some opportunities to buy. I have five holders, but three sizes. Uh, or is it six? It's six holders, but I think it's three sizes. Um, no, it's four sizes. Sorry, uh, I'm working. But chuck, drill chuck, uh, keyless drill chuck, heavier, bigger Jacobs truck chuck, boring head with a happens to have the a uh, Mesa tools cutter in it. Um, a little face mill that I just had an opportunity to buy. Uh, one of the Banggood face mills. Uh, and back here is an end mill, odd end mill I bought off eBay that was probably a waste of money. The nice thing about this cabinet over what I was going to get from, uh, what you might get from uh, uh, the, the, the Grizzly unit, I will the, the big advantage I see here is that this cabinet had eight drawers, four small half drawers, I mean six small half drawers, and two full width, larger, uh, somewhat deeper drawers. The small drawers came with a simple softwood and masonite divider system on two of the drawers. So I have, out of materials I had laying around, I duplicated that type system. So all six of my drawers have those dividers. I will probably make dividers for the two deeper drawers, but the different materials, uh, different cuts because they're deeper. Um, but this is where I intend, and I didn't put them in because I just brought this up today, this is where I intend to put my either most or all of my end mill collection, which I've been slowly gathering. I have a relatively small number of end mills compared to, I'm sure, some people, because I've had to start more or less from scratch. And it's, you know, not having a mach working machine, because the mill is still not wired up for uh, operation yet, um, it's hard to say what end mills I'll need. So thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully I haven't made too many weird cuts. Thanks for watching, and... Uh, Subscribe if you like the channel. Give me a like. Um, and uh, thanks to Ed Soboleski for helping me get some more subscribers. Um, 
hopefully I can get some good content out there so people can see what's going on. Thank you very much.